Between 1979 and 1981, a series of horrific murders shook the city of Atlanta to its core. At least 28 African-American children, adolescents, and young adults, mostly boys, were kidnapped and brutally killed in a 22-month period, leaving a community in mourning and a city forever changed. The victims came from diverse backgrounds, but they shared a common thread. They were all young, black, and full of promise, with dreams and aspirations that would never be realized. The victims of the Atlanta child murders were a diverse group, united only by their race and their youth. They were students, siblings, and friends, with dreams and aspirations that would never be realized. Among them were 14-year-old Edward Hope Smith and 13-year-old Alfred Evans, whose bodies were found in a vacant parking lot just days after they disappeared in the summer of 1979. Milton Harvey, age 14, and Yusuf Bell, age 9, were also found dead later that year, their bodies discovered in desolate areas of the city. As the killings continued into 1980, the victims became even younger. Angel Lanier, just 12 years old, was found tied to a tree, while 11-year-old Jeffrey Mathis vanished without a trace. The murders continued unabated, with victims ranging from young children to teenagers, all snatched from their neighborhoods and communities. The victims' families were left to grapple with unimaginable grief and loss as they struggled to make sense of the senseless violence that had claimed their loved ones. The Atlanta child murders took place over a 22-month period from July 1979 to May 1981. The killings shared common details, with most of the victims being strangled or asphyxiated. The bodies were often dumped in rivers, vacant lots, or other remote areas, leaving the community in a state of constant fear and anxiety. Parents were afraid to let their children play outside, and the city's streets were eerily quiet as residents stayed indoors, afraid of becoming the next victim. The investigation into the murders was initially handled by the Atlanta Police Department and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. However, as the death toll mounted and the case gained national attention, the FBI became involved in November 1980. The Bureau's Behavioral Sciences Unit sent profilers to Atlanta to develop a profile of the killer, who was believed to be African American and of average or above average intelligence. The investigators worked tirelessly, following leads and interviewing witnesses, but the killer remained elusive, taunting the police and the public with his brazen crimes. In May 1981, a major break in the case came when police surveillance teams staked out the bridges over the Chattahoochee River. On May 22nd, a team consisting of an FBI agent, an Atlanta police officer, and two police cadets heard a loud splash and saw a car speed across the bridge. The car was stopped and the driver was identified as 23-year-old Wayne Williams, a freelance photographer. Williams was known to the police, having been questioned earlier in the investigation, but he had never been considered a prime suspect. Williams was arrested on June 21, 1981, and was convicted of the murders of two adults, Nathaniel Cater and Jimmy Ray Payne, in February 1982. Following the trial, the Law Enforcement Task Force concluded that there was enough evidence to link Williams to another 20 of the 29 deaths. However, Williams was never charged in the child killings, and the case remains controversial to this day. Many believe that Williams was unfairly targeted due to his race and his unconventional lifestyle, and that the evidence against him was circumstantial at best. The motive behind the Atlanta child murders remains unclear. Some have speculated that Williams, who was described as a loner with a history of impersonating authority figures, may have targeted the victims due to a sense of rejection or a desire for attention. Others have argued that the killings were racially motivated, targeting the city's African-American community. Williams himself has maintained his innocence, claiming that he was the victim of a racist justice system that was desperate to solve the case at any cost. 
The trial of Wayne Williams was a media circus, with the prosecution presenting evidence linking him to the murders through meticulous hair and fiber analysis and witness testimony. The prosecution argued that Williams had a history of targeting young black males and that he had been seen in the company of several of the victims. However, the defense argued that the evidence was circumstantial and that Williams was being scapegoated due to the pressure to solve the case. They pointed out that there were no eyewitnesses to the murders and that the physical evidence was inconclusive. In the end, Williams was convicted of the murders of Cater and Payne and sentenced to two consecutive life sentences. However, the controversy surrounding the case has never fully subsided, with many questioning whether Williams was truly responsible for all of the killings and whether justice was truly served. Some have argued that the real killer is still out there, while others believe that the case was closed too quickly in order to appease a public that was desperate for answers. The Atlanta child murders left an indelible mark on the city and the nation. The victims, whose lives were cut short by a senseless act of violence, will never be forgotten. The case also highlighted the systemic racism and injustice that plagued the criminal justice system, with many arguing that the investigation and prosecution of Wayne Williams were tainted by racial bias and a rush to judgment. The case also raised questions about the role of the media in shaping public opinion and the pressure that law enforcement faces to solve high-profile cases. Today, the Atlanta child murders remain a haunting reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of justice and equality. The case has been the subject of numerous books, films, and documentaries, each seeking to shed light on the tragedy and its lasting impact. In 2019, the city of Atlanta announced plans to reopen the investigation into the murders with the hope of finally bringing closure to the victims' families and the community. However, many remain skeptical that the truth will ever be fully known and that the real killer will never be brought to justice. Despite the pain and the loss, the legacy of the Atlanta child murders lives on in the fight for social justice and the protection of vulnerable children. The victims' families have become advocates for change, working to ensure that no other family has to endure the same heartbreak. And while the wounds may never fully heal, the memory of the victims and the struggle for justice will continue to inspire and guide us in the fight against racism, violence, and injustice.